Hey, my name's James Mulvaney and welcome to Working Lunch, the show where I speak to a different expert every week to discuss three actionable strategies to grow your audience, grow your business or grow your team. Now, today's session is about to begin, so stay right there and we'll be kicking off today's session very shortly. All right, guys, welcome to Working Lunch. My guest today is Mike Russell from Music Radio Creative. And we're about to start. Hey, Mike. Hey, Jay. <laughs> How's it hey. going? <laughs> like 10, 9, 8. Wow. This is, the, this is our new intro. So you're the first guest to get this treatment. We actually just finished that the other day. <laughs> but I was a bit like intimidated. I was like, goodness, right. So I've got this 10 second thing where I need to speak over it. And, and it's actually the first time I've ever rehearsed this. So I think, cool. I think that turned out okay. Yeah, it's good. You, you just need a voiceover with a bit of reverb going 10, 9, like that. <laughs> so, real dramaticism, right? There you go. You've got that in real time. I'm impressed. How, so how does that work? That is uh, Lexicon Reverb. It's running through my Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK disc. I know we'll talk uh, gear probably a bit later on. Yeah. So Lexicon Reverb, it's, um, it's Grammy Award winning three times, James. Oh. So it's like I could sing an Adele song for you now, but I won't. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> All right. So um, welcome to Working Lunch, Mike. First of all, um, just introduce yourself. I know you have a fantastic YouTube channel, which I'm sure we'll get on to. Um, but just tell us a little bit about your background and you know how you got started in the kind of industry and what you do over at Music Radio Creative. Yeah, sure. Thanks. So um, my background is originally in radio, even though now I'm a podcaster, a live streamer, and yeah. also I teach people how to sound great using Adobe Audition. Um, but I actually did my first radio show back in, this is going to age me, 1995. Uh, I opened the fader for the first time. I still remember playing the Christmas jingles on Hospital Radio Tunbridge Wells. Uh, yeah. For those of you outside the UK, is a radio station that broadcasts to a hospital. And, uh, and it all grew from there. Then I got into local radio, uh, worked my way up to regional radio and national radio. I actually worked where you're located, uh, James, in Manchester for a while at Rock Radio, which I think has now become Real Radio XS. Um, so, yeah, been all over, uh, worked for Talk Radio, that's now Talk Sports in the UK, mm. uh, and did a breakfast show in Australia got into podcasting, started really listening to podcasts in 2011, mm -hmm. uh, changed my life completely just listening to podcasts. Uh, and now, yeah, I work uh, from home every day here on the Isle of Wight with my wonderful wife. And we run a business called Music Radio Creative, where we create audio for people. Yeah. And um, YouTube, obviously, is a huge part of, of what you do. Uh, I, you've got a fantastic YouTube channel. You know, I've been following it for, for a few years and I know some of the videos you, you create are absolutely amazing, especially for anyone like, and looking to get started. And I think um, what's interesting is, you know, with your kind of career, obviously you started in radio, but you've really, you know, becoming sort of like a live streamer, like you say, and applying those skills uh, and, and knowing what equipment to have is so and now important to, to not just people who are involved or interested in radio, but, you know, if you're running an online business, if you're starting a podcast, these are things that you need to know. Audio is really important. Yeah, it really is. And you can start with the minimum of equipment. You can just mm. grab yourself a microphone, a USB microphone. There are so many options on USB microphones. So find mm. a good one of those maybe to get started. Plug it into your MacBook Pro, your PC, whatever it is, um, and then fire up some online streaming software. In a way, you pretty much got a radio station. So yeah. I thought one of the videos, uh, I think it's on, is it like your channel video where you kind of demo the fact that without good sound video isn't very good is that the one that comes up on your your channel yeah. homepage and it's just it's such a, an important point to make i think yeah. there's too many you know companies out there they shoot video you know they say yes the iphone is a great video camera which it is yeah but it's not got great audio built in no so, so, you, so that's the next step the room. <laughs> yeah cool okay um right let's dive into today's um session then um Basically, we're talking about audio today. We're talking all things radio, all things podcasting. Um, let's dive into sort of the sort of first topic of simple audio production techniques. How can someone make sure that they're sounding their best? Okay, well, that's a fantastic first question. Um, so many people will be recording maybe and then uploading as podcasts, but then another great chunk of people probably watching this show uh, will be doing stuff live in the moment. Mm. And the hardest thing is to get consistency uh, when you're recording something, when you're going live. Obviously, when you record and you upload, you can post-produce. So that's a lot of what I teach. You can record the audio. You can go into Adobe Audition. You can put on uh, equalizers, compressors, 
which we can talk about a little bit later, uh, and make audio just sound better. But what about if you're doing it in real time? Uh, that's when you need to get the right hardware. So you need, obviously, a great microphone to start with, uh, something that sounds good. So actually, just the other week on our live stream, uh, we bought the Amazon Basics Dynamic Cardioid Microphone. Do not right. buy that microphone. It's <laughs> awful. <laughs> it's designed for people on stage who are singing karaoke tracks, but yeah. definitely not podcasters and radio broadcasters. So get the right microphone. Don't spend, you know, $50 or 35 quid on an Amazon Basics mic. You know, spend uh, at least, I'd say, you know, at least $100 or, you know, around the, you know, around the hundred pounds mark mm -hmm. uh, here in the UK to get a nice microphone. And then you can plug it into processing boxes that make it sound better. Obviously, you can do this stuff uh, on your computer. You can use audio plugins uh, on software like OBS. Yes, um, to make stuff sound better in real time. But I prefer the hardware route. Um, mm -hmm. I could actually uh, cut to my full studio view. I don't know if it's going to look good with our our split screen we've got. Well, going I can on. make you. Uh, I can make you full screen. I think, can't I? There we go. Uh, there you go. Just over here. This is where I have. Um, this is my rack. So mm -hmm. I've got four DBX units. I've got in front of me, I've got two stream decks. So this is how I can change the camera view for you. I've got a power conditioner. This is really, really important. Plug your audio hardware into a power conditioner. That can cut down on like hiss and hum and any kind of electrical interference. These units over here, we can talk about these a little bit more if you like, James. Mm -hmm. uh, but they process you in real time. Uh, they increase the clarity and crispness of your voice and do all of that in real time. So if you've got a radio station, if you're recording a podcast, you can do it all in those units. And actually, if you do post-production, it cuts down on what you have to do in post because it just sounds good already. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure we're going to have a lot of questions about those that setup you've got there. I must admit, that's probably one of the most impressive live streaming setups I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, uh, do you know, the furniture you've got is great as well. This is like a proper audio editing desk, isn't it? We've got like a rack space built into it. Yes. Um, which makes all the difference too. So it's kind of, um, you know, you, you've really upped your game there. Um, power conditioning unit, that's something that I've never considered before, you know. Super important, super cheap. Again, yeah. you'll spend $150, $135 to get yourself like, I, I looked into this and I found Furman to be one of the greatest creators of power conditioning units. I've got the M-10XE, which has about, I think, eight or maybe 10 um, of those, you know, kettle style plugs where you can put things in and okay, yeah. really, really well. And you can just, it's got an on off switch in front of you. So when I finish for the day here in the studio, I can just switch all the audio gear off and not leave it on and buzzing and humming overnight. I know there's arguments like some producers say, oh no, you should leave your processors on all the time. So they stay nice and warm and they don't get power surges. But I think with a power conditioner, you don't have to worry about that. So true. Okay. Interesting. So, and then, just a quick question on that. So do you do you actually plug your computer into that or just the audio equipment that goes through that? Just the audio. I, I did consider it, but I didn't want to sort of waste the ability of the, of the power conditioning unit on, on something that didn't necessarily need it. But what mm. I do have is I have an uninterrupted power supply mm. uh, currently using CyberPower, um, which actually are really good because my first unit from them uh, actually uh, it went wrong after two weeks. It had this fault flashing up and unfortunately did exactly what a UPS shouldn't do. It cuts off all the power <laughs> to my right, stuff okay. at random times. So I, I wrote into their customer service and they actually, um, they did an RMA very, very quickly for me. And I've got a really good unit, which is working perfectly. And it means even if the power goes down here, then that will keep my computers on and whirring away for about 15 minutes. So it's nice if you want to save your work and close down nicely, but it, it also helps if you're live streaming as well. Uh, you can You can stay live. You know. <laughs> so, so someone getting into audio, what are the, the most important things that they need to know, to know when they're recording, whether it's like live or if you're pre-recording, what are kind of like three sort of first things that you should be thinking about when you're setting up your studio or you're setting up your office for, for doing that? Okay, three things to start thinking about. Yeah. Uh, the first thing is think about the uh, acoustics of your room. So many rooms are not perfect. They have a lot of echo and it can just not sound great. So you can get around that first point in one of two ways. You can either put tiles on your wall. They can be the the really posh, expensive tiles that I've got behind me that do the job. Uh, they stop sound reflecting perfectly, sound great. Um, and they're very nice. But you can also buy the, the foam from like Amazon or wherever, uh, and stick that on your wall. It's not as uh, beautiful to look at, but it does the same job, basically. So get your recording space sounding good. The second thing you want to consider is 
obviously the kind of microphone you're using. So, you know, as I've already said, the mo- basically the more you pay for a microphone, in my experience, the better it sounds. Uh, and that's understandable. It might be overkill. If you're a podcaster, I'd say around $350 is around that sweet spot. That's where right. you'll find things like the Shure SM7B, uh, uh-huh. things like that, the Heil PR40, microphones like that. You'll even find some good mics. I've been testing out the uh, Rode Pod mic recently. That's like $99. And mm. that- good um but yeah anything under the that mark is mm, uh be careful because lots of mics are designed for stage and then you can go all the way up to a thousand dollars which is this one this is a real vocal mic but maybe overkill for podcasting maybe not for radio um so you just have to make a decision on that and then number three get your recording levels absolutely spot on uh test them out make sure you're not clipping so usually negative 12 to negative 6 db on your audio editor or going into your streaming software, whatever you're using, just try to stay away from that zero dB mark and run the risk of sounding all distorted and hot and terrible. Yeah, it's quite easy. Just make sure you're not hitting red, really. I mean, I think, you know, most people, if you're going into yellow, it's not not the end of the world. But if you go to red, and and I've done, I've made, I've made this mistake so many times before where you've recorded something and it's quite easy to amplify, but it's not very easy to push it back down if you're clipping. That's the worst thing ever. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and okay, so so that's so that's great. So let's kind of get on to talking about gear. Now I know obviously you're a big fan of, of, of lots of boxes and equipment. Um, firstly, let's talk microphones: dynamic versus condenser. Yeah, that's a, that's a great idea. So dynamic condenser. There's a few differences. Uh, mm-hmm. Dynamic generally, you tend to focus more just on the voice going straight into it, um, and it doesn't require any power. So Condensers require power. They require an XLR cable to go inside and send power and to uh, make it operate. Mm. Uh, so that's known as phantom power. And you'll need that coming in either from your mixer, your audio interface, or your microphone preamp, which is one of the boxes I was showing you earlier. It can provide power. Uh, so there are swings and roundabouts with that. The condenser microphones, uh, you don't need to turn the gain up as high because they're powered. So you get a nice loud signal. Whereas yep. dynamic microphones tend to be pretty quiet like the shore sm7b is very very quiet a lot of people actually spend another 150 dollars or so on a cloud yeah. lifter to increase the volume uh so be aware of that but generally dynamic mics are better for uh, less well sound treated rooms and condenser mics tend to pick up a lot more around you they tend to be higher quality than dynamic mics in general um but yeah they'll pick up more around you so it really depends on the space that you're working in as to what you should choose really one, one thing you must have noticed, I've noticed this before, and we're getting kind of geeky here, but uh, in America, right, every single radio studio has got dynamic microphones in. In the UK, yeah. everyone's got condensers. Now, I personally prefer condenser microphones. I think you're right, Let they me- sound better. There's just more of yeah. a warmth to them. But yes. I, I can't understand why, uh, wh- why, where that argument, where that separation has come from. Like, it's strange, because I, I get these, we get these comment wars on YouTube, you know, whenever we post a microphone review, especially on radio.co with people saying, you know, why aren't you reviewing more dynamic microphones? Where's the Electro Voice RE20? Oh, yeah. uh, but in the UK, you don't see it anywhere. It's really strange. There's this complete cultural difference in choice of microphones. Yeah. Well, you know, that's so true. And yeah. it's not something I'd really noticed before. But I remember first radio station I worked at, one of the first stations I worked at, had the Audio-Technica AT4033A. Mm. Uh, and that was a decent condenser mic. Um, but, yeah, in America, I, I don't know, they like the – kind of long thin mics that they can really get up to and they can they can jock a bit can't they over the song so hey it's your number one station this is hot 100 you know all that kind of jocking right up they like to really get close and intimate with the mic so i don't know but i don't i really don't know that's i never really thought about it before but now you mention it it's so clear that that is one of these things that's come up on comments time and time again if you've got any ideas anyone watching (laughs) <laughs> please put them in the comments you know we'd love to hear your opinions and also likewise um you know if, if you've got if anyone watches has got any suggestions for microphones they like to use or questions please put them in the comments okay so let's run through some options then um you mentioned the shore sm7b uh, you mentioned the microphone you've got in front of you quite expensive um let's kind of go for, for for three choices um dynamic and three choices condenser like ranging from like cheap to kind of relatively expensive what would your sort of top six be in both those categories Okay, well, uh, in, let's say, mid to late September 2020, yeah. as of this moment, this yeah. is these are my three choices, but they're changing all the time. So yes. right now, uh, for Dynamic Mic, I'm I'm rocking a Rode Pod Mic uh, just there. There you go. There's the Rode Pod Mic. 
I've been using that. I've just used it for the first time on my live stream uh, last Friday, and I really liked it. Uh, for the price point, it's insane. So yeah, I'm going to use it a few more weeks. So definitely one to look into if you've got $99 to spare. Uh, go and check that one out. Sure, SM7B is definitely a staple again in the dynamic world. There's nothing quite like it. If you want to be exactly like Joe Rogan and maybe get a million pound Spotify deal, uh, then use the SM7B. <laughs> it works for Joe. And yeah. then uh, what else? Uh, let's think of something else. Hmm, I'm, I'm going to throw a curveball out there and I'm going to say for dynamic mice, this is just off the top of my head. Um, have a look at the SE Electronics. I think it's the V7, I want to say. I remember testing that one a long time ago and thinking, crikey, for the price, that's really, really good. I think it's about $79, $89. So um, mm. it's more of a one of those karaoke handheld mics. You can put it in a stand in front of you. Um, yeah, yeah. Those are dynamics, yeah, from sort of budget to mid to, to high. Uh, condenser microphones, absolute favorite microphone of the moment is this, the AKG C414 XL2. It's $999. And it's awesome. You can actually take this off and it sounds even better, but I like the, the pop screen. And you can't actually see this, but the other side, hang on, no, you can. The other side is golden. So it's it's very, very lovely. Has yeah, lots yeah. of different polar patterns on it, so it's really good. Um, and then I want to say a different, uh, different price ranges for condenser. Let me think. I'm just looking around me. This is hard because this is kind of all I use in terms of condensers now. Um... <laughs> I, I can give a shout out to the Neumann TLM 103 because uh, it's the mic got. we've got over yeah, there. It's a really yeah. solid mic. A lot of voiceover artists use that, but again, it's similar price to this one. Mm. So it's very high end. Um, condenser at a uh, sort of lower price point. Oh, yes. I'll go and get it. Hang on. It's just here. Um, I'm going to give a big shout out again. Sorry, it's, it's AKG again, but this one here is the AKG P120. This is about $99, and it's mm. amazing, like literally amazing. It's like the sound you get from that is awesome for the price. Um, and it's actually quite a forgiving condenser mic, so if you want to go ahead and use it on your audio, um, it's one of the best mics I've found testing in different uh, environments and rooms and situations. Even though it is condenser, it's pretty good. How about the... Uh... Have you seen the Worker B? Have you tried that yet? I'm, tr I'm tr we're trying to get hold of one. It's a, uh, it's like they're about, I think again about eighty dollars, hundred, over eight hundred dollars, eighty pounds, and it's like bright sort of uh, black and yellow stripes on it. It looks like a B. Worker B by, oh, mm. I can't remember the, the manufacturer, uh, but anyway, they they are apparently. I've watched a few videos. We're trying to get hold of one as I say to review at the moment. Apparently, they're really good. Uh, Neat wow. is the, is a company. Interesting. That is not one I've looked into. So um, yeah, I only came know. across it recently, but they, yeah. a, they, they seem to be really good. Apparently, you get um, a lot of value for your money, you know, sound wise, and it looks awesome. You know, I think oh. it's like this is one of these things, isn't it? Like this company is obviously like jumping on the bandwagon. Of, okay, a lot of people are streaming. They actually have their microphones on camera, which wasn't the case twenty years yeah. ago, yeah. Or even ten years ago. So like, let's make it look as cool as possible. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's interesting. I don't know if the Worker B is um, a USB microphone or not. Do you know if it's USB or no, XLR? I think it's, it's just XLR, yeah. It's just XLR. a condenser. But then there's a, there's a King B as well, which is like the larger version, which I guess is more equivalent to like a U87. Uh, but, but again, for a fraction of the price. So apparently wow. the guys behind this company came from uh, Blue. I think they, they were like ex-Blue microphone engineers and they started their own business, something like that. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. One thing I've I've noticed, like talking about uh, blue and USB mics, is mm, that yeah. USB mics for streamers, it's all the rage. I don't know one uh, microphone manufacturer that hasn't hopped on the USB microphone bandwagon. Uh, even late last year, AKG mm. did it with the AKG Lyra. Uh, obviously, blue have been massive in the game for a long time, but not uh, you know blue tend to be known for like the blue Yeti and the blue Snowball and all of that. But actually, you know, a lot of people may not know that blue also makes some really high end microphones. Mm. It's like the blue Kiwi that's like four thousand dollars. Uh, you know, so it's it's wow. quite interesting to see you know the range of products that a, a mic company has available. What would you suggest on XLR microphones if people are thinking about getting going down that route? Well, as in in terms of chain? Yeah, uh, not XLR. Sorry, uh, USB microphones, because you obviously mentioned then, um, you know, that Blue have got the kind of snowball, etc., which I know are very popular, but I know that I don't think they're the best sounding microphones ever. So, you know, would you advise if someone's looking to buy a microphone, is it worth investing in that extra step, which is obviously getting like a USB sound card, 
so you can plug an XLR microphone in or would you uh, go straight to, to USB mic? Yeah, my preferred choice is definitely XLR. So mm. yeah, get yourself, yeah, either like you say, a sound card or audio interface. I find the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, it's got two XLR inputs on the front, really, really good. Easy mm. way of getting XLR mics, pro XLR mics into a computer. But if you want to go USB, I mean, there's just so many. It's like there's the AKG Lyra, there's the Blue Yeti, uh, there's the Bayer Dynamic Fox, there's the Samsung Satellite, uh, there's the multi-purpose ones like the Samsung Q2U that are mm-hmm. XLR and USB. I think USB is is mainly brilliant because of the convenience. Mm-hmm. Uh, and most streamers are going to say, you know, I don't want to worry about like getting this like mixer and this audio interface and the DBXs and the processing units. I'll just buy myself a USB mic and plug it in and process it on the fly. So mm-hmm. there is definitely a trend towards that, I think. so. Okay, cool. And so, and that sort of leads me into the next question, the processing. Obviously you showed us your incredible setup earlier. Um, what sort of avi- advice would you give people on, on processing? Is it something that everyone should be thinking about or is it sort of like a luxury? Yeah, I think you should definitely be thinking about it uh, yeah. for a number of reasons. First of all, even if you get a really good USB mic and you plug it straight in, definitely recommend putting some processing on there. Mm. Depending on the software you're using, I mean, I know OBS Studio has the ability to insert VST plugins um, into your audio chain. Yep. So you can do some processing that way. There's also certain pieces of software like on Mac, uh, you've got Audio Hijack from Rogue Amoeba. Uh, I think PC, there's, there's Voice Meter Banana, but I've never really played with that. Uh, right. There are possibly a few other methods uh, like ASIO for All um, where you can manipulate audio before it hits your actual audience. And basically you want to stick on uh, the very basics, I'd say an EQ, equalization, uh, to just improve certain frequencies and maybe take off, roll off the low end, um, so you get rid of the low end that's not required. Uh, also pop a compressor on, uh, that just kind of flattens out your voice. So if you're wondering why sometimes you're really loud and sometimes you're really quiet, the compressor will even that all out. Mm-hmm. And I'd also definitely, definitely put a limiter on what you're putting out there um, because the limiter will simply take audio that goes to a certain threshold and stop it going any louder. So that stops distortion. It's quite good for cutting down on that. Okay, cool. And and you mentioned earlier DBX286S. Just for anyone who's watching who doesn't know what that is, can you just give a bit of an overview? Yes, <laughs> it is an awesome mic preamp and processor. I can actually cut maybe uh, yeah. again over here. You can see it. It's kind of in the distance, but it's got like lots of different uh, buttons on here. So you plug your microphone into the back of that box mm-hmm. and then you there's like a gain knob, so like a volume knob, phantom power if you're using condenser. You've got a compressor right there built in that will make your voice sound amazing. You've got a de that removes the sibilant top end of your voice, uh, an enhancer, which is low frequency and high frequency so improving the low and the high end of your voice and an expander gate which personally i think is the absolute best feature of the dbx 286s unit what that will do is it will take audio that goes below a certain volume level that you set and it will mute it out now you can do this with hardware with software as well so there's lots of software that have noise gates built in um but i find that the noise gate on the dbx is just very very easy going it's not over aggressive you find some of those software gates they're kind of either on or off so they can right. cut your words off like uh, wait through what you're mm-hmm. saying like, it sounds like that if your mm-hmm. gate is too aggressive with the the hardware unit i just find it's very soft and easy it's more of a fade in fade out um but it really helps and what you might find is you might want to get a mic preamp and processor like that one before mm-hmm. you do sound treatment because it can make a huge difference if, if you're in a room that's got echo and air conditioning units whirring away and you set that expander gate just right, it can actually make it sound much better without the need. And then you can look into maybe a few uh, sound tiles as well. Yeah, again, I, I, one of the things I've noticed when I've been configuring the, the unit in the past, interestingly, I actually don't have any processing on, on at all now. I've got one of these units and I kind of, I'll go through phases where I use it and I, I won't. And, you know, I'm in my home office, which isn't perfectly treated, but, um, yeah. you know, I think it, it can make a big difference. And certainly for live streams, like you say, it's much easier than having to kind of figure out how to sort of somehow do it with software. But um, I think less can be more as well. Sometimes people like amp up those but- or the knobs too too much and it ends up just being kind of like overkill. Like I've noticed with like the de for example, it can kind of make you sound almost strange. So, you know, sometimes you can just have a little touch of it on 
and it can it can certainly help but it doesn't necessarily need to be you don't need to go out all out on your gating or all out on your ds because it can end up just sound making you sound strange almost yes really over over processed and, and terrible yeah interesting because your audio actually sounds decent and there's no visible microphone in your shot so what i'm curious what you're using well microphones here which is just uh Ah, just uh, uh, it's it's TLM 103, um, and yeah, it's that's it. It's and I've just got it going into an Audient ID4 interface at the moment. But as I say, I've got a DBX over there, and one of the things I've just ordered, which I want to mess around with, is a um, Universal Audio Apollo, which you can actually put DSP plugins directly in the like within the device, which I've never done before. But it's something that I kind of it would be interesting to mess around. So I think I've got one of them coming next week. That'd be brilliant. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So, okay, cool. Um, we've got tons of questions coming in already. So we're going to be taking some questions. Just to touch on our sort of final topic, um, I obviously know a lot of people watching are going to be interested in starting up podcasts or starting up radio stations. So what are your kind of go-to resources to get, um, you know, a podcast or a station up and running or, or go-to bits of sort of tips and advice, really? So if you want to start your first podcast or radio station like yes. where would we go to or what, what would yeah and, and 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 what advice would you give to someone who's thinking about going down that route i think advice and and tips are always useful definitely uh well this is this is an interesting one because my advice would be slightly different depending on what you're planning to do so mm-hmm. if you want to start your own online radio station um you need to obviously look into how that's going to work and you know what you're going to use for play out uh, I know you provide a great service at uh, Radio Co uh, mm-hmm. that covers most of that. But I guess the, the the biggest can of worms when you're getting into that side of things, if you're not doing a talk radio station, is the music licensing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a little chat before we went on about that. We did, that yeah. thing, and it's different in different parts of the world, and there are different licensing agencies uh, and all of that. So you really need to look into this very, very carefully. I know, James, you've done some of your own projects uh, related to radio uh and i i as well as working in traditional radio myself uh back in 2012 now so my knowledge is probably a little bit outdated yeah. i started an online radio station and I, I just found that the uh the licensing fees and the fact that you had to geolock it uh, and all the rest of it it got really really complicated for me mm. um but you probably have solutions to that it's, it's 2020 now so. i wish there was an easier solution you know this is one of these things that we we've kind of like looked into and we've tried to to build in licensing and it's just the, the agencies make it all the record labels make it very difficult i think mm-hmm. um you, you know we've got a great article over on radio.co which talks through the different licensing authorities for each country yeah pick the phone up and have conversations with them it, nowadays with in the uk certainly prs and ppl it's pretty straightforward to get started it's just really like signing up to a license like using an e-commerce type platform you can buy one online i think they're about 200 quid a year so it's not it's not um, bank breaking, obviously, to begin with anyway. You know, when you start getting higher listener numbers or you start generating lots of revenue, can obviously become more expensive. But hopefully by then, you'll, you know, you'll be in a position to start it. I think um, also another thing is just thinking about who your audience is. You know, this is like one of the things that loads of people come, come to us and they think they've got this great idea, but they haven't actually thought about listen, who's going to be sat there on the other end. And that's so important, I think. No, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, that kind of goes on nicely to podcasting because you can talk about a subject that may never make it onto primetime radio but you can create a whole podcast and you can find an audience that really want to hear that um the only thing there is if you're putting out content which is content you're creating speech-based content Mm -hmm. uh you need to have enough topics in the can so before you start your show uh you know don't just go and say right i'm gonna do the first couple of episodes and see how it goes you know, have a list of topics you want to do. Do some research, you know, find out what, what are the questions people are asking. And you can go, you know, either into online forums, Reddit is a good place, but also I find Quora, the um, the question and answers site. That's quite a good place to do some research if you think, right, you know, people really want to know about dog grooming. So I'm going to do the dog grooming podcast and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. Go and find all the questions that have been asked about dog grooming over on Quora and, and make yourself a list and then have each episode the title of, you know, best shampoo to use for a dog, that kind of thing. So Yeah, yeah. I think um, you make a good point there also. Like someone else put this in a different way, which I think is really clever, is, uh, you know, don't think about episode two, be thinking about episode 20, yeah. you know, because this is the thing, you know, you might have a great idea and you might think, okay, well, let's 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 record four episodes or six episodes to begin with. But then what? Like you need to make sure you're thinking about 
the long-term strategy as well as just kind of like, oh, I want to start a podcast. I'm going to talk for an hour on this and then an hour on that. And then that's it. You know, you, you, it's really a case of like, you need to be in it for the long game. I think also nowadays, especially. I'm really curious to ask you, James, like yeah. uh, particularly with radio streaming, because you have a, a lot of expertise in this. Mm. Um, how can you make uh, this, is it possible to make radio streaming or online streaming a full-time living, to run a radio station online that makes money? Um, uh, you must have seen this time after time, so I'm just yeah. curious if there's any formula there or anything that works. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think these days the, the best, interesting, I actually did a video about this last week. Um, the, the best way of monetizing any online audience, I think, is not necessarily re relying on advertisers. You know, I think you need to be more creative about how you're um, generating revenue. So things like merchandise can be really powerful. Um, you know, options like, uh, you know, pr sort of like we've seen a lot of podcasts, especially, and also some radio stations do really well with things like crowdfunding and, um, you know, having subscription services. So offering bonus or premium content using something like um, uh, PayPal or um, Patreon, that kind of thing. And basically just having like user supported subscriptions you know, making it like a low enough fee where you can get lots and lots of people buying into it. So you might only charge two, three dollars a month. It's something that at the end of that month, you don't want people looking at their credit card statement thinking, oh, fifteen dollars, I'm going to cancel that. If it's only two, three dollars, you can get two, three hundred people subscribing. Suddenly you start making a living from it. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's really cool. that's and point. also, you know, as I say, affiliate deals, promotions, sponsorship, um, you know, there, there are lots of different things. Events, of course, is huge. And also, I think a lot of people who, you know, get into podcasting and radio, it's the skills that you can then apply to other businesses. So you can actually start up. So when we ran MCR Live here in Manchester, one of our main ways of generating revenue was doing a lot of production work for other companies. So we were doing videos. We were doing, um, you know, audio recording podcasts for, for businesses as well, uh, you know, as a way to help fund that project. That's brilliant. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. So there are so many ways, but like you say, look out of the sort of advertising bubble of like having to get adverts on your station or, you know, monetize, you know, through, if you're on YouTube, you know, monetizing with the Google AdSense program. Um, yeah, certainly I, something that resonated me with me is, uh, affiliates. So mm. you can find something, some service or some, uh, product that has an affiliate program that's relevant to your audience. Uh, it can be a win-win situation because you're recommending something really good and your audience also want to help you. So yeah, it's, it's brilliant. Cool. Okay. Right. Let's take some questions, Mike, shall we? Wow. Yeah. I can see, uh, it's a very busy chat, chat box. Very, actually. very busy chat. So, uh, I'm just going to start at the top here. So this was one from Sam. He says, is FM radio dying? Is streaming radio the future or like this kind of like live streaming? What's your opinion on that? <laughs> that's interesting fm radio i i think the frequency uh fm uh will eventually go the way that am has kind of gone you know um yeah. in the technologies are all, always improving it's not what is being done on those fm frequencies it's just simply the method it's delivered so mm -hmm. you know the style of fm radio could live on uh and does live on in the internet age uh, but i think eventually yeah radio stations transmitting on frequency modulation will absolutely die off but the yeah. ideas and the fantastic stuff that's done by radio stations on fm right now will not die off and they'll just adapt to the the new media age as we're seeing now like i just think this this joe rogan example is absolutely stunning in yeah. the fact that like, it's an app competing against an app now we're going to see more of that in the future you know spotify going up against youtube and even I listened to Joe Rogan recently and he said, you know, it's not that, you know, I've got anything against YouTube. We just didn't, we never had a, a personal relationship that I'm now forming with Spotify. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of headhunted in that fashion. So. But then interestingly, you know, I was reading the other day, a lot of the um, episodes, apparently they're kind of curating what can and can't go in. So obviously mm -hmm. yeah. there's, you know, there's an argument that, you know, podcasting is losing its soul in or whatever. Yeah. Um, because, you know, obviously now like if, if, if Spotify sort of hoovers up too much of that part of the market and yeah. suddenly Spotify becomes the go-to platform, it's kind of like what happened with YouTube in like 2005, 2006, there were lots of different video platforms. And then all of a sudden it was just YouTube and, and obviously YouTube have got the final say in what, what can, go and what doesn't and the good thing about podcasting is it is still kind of like an open platform you can talk about what you want it's not moderated you know you're not um uh, sort of too bound by restrictions based on what advertisers want you to say and what they don't want you to say etc but obviously like now with joe rogan it's kind of they've got a sort of um you know 
uh, sort of like uh, like look through his content and think okay do we really want that on our platform yes or no that you know so some controversies there but we'll, that's kind of a discussion for another time i think but it's quite interesting anyway interesting, um, yeah 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 so um this is a question from daniel Lindsay. mike why does my audio randomly go up and down i'm using a road pod mic and roadcaster over streamlabs oh interesting why does it randomly go up and down yeah uh, so uh maybe a few things um first of all if you're using the roadcaster pro and the road uh, pod mic is plugged in that should be super compatible because they're two products by the same manufacturer. I think the Rodecaster Pro actually has a preset for each mic channel, and yep. I think there is a pod mic preset. So make sure that's selected, first of all, on your Rodecaster Pro so that all the settings are ideal for your mic. Um, you might want to check noise gating as well, so the noise gate feature on your Rodecaster Pro. Uh, and just make sure you're close to the microphone because if you're far away and you've got a noise gate, it, it might start shutting you down as you go yeah. quiet um stream should be fine just make sure you've got no funny filters going on there or anything like that again check there's no noise gate uh that's too aggressive or anything like that if you're talking up and down because it could be one of two things up and down as in like on and then off and on and off which would be a noise gate or it could be just loud and then quiet loud and then quiet if it's the latter then you want to look into compression so either do that via your roadcaster pro which i know it can do that uh or put a compressor in uh via streamlabs obs i think you're using uh should have vst support and you can grab some compressor to put in there if you're yeah if you're on a mac you're quite lucky because you can use audio units uh apple audio units uh and there is a compressor so yeah cool there's ways to do it um also on the subject of road Par pro roadcaster pro uh what are your thoughts on it yeah, I've got one. It's um, it's great. I, I have not used it as much as I'd like to, uh, particularly too. this year. Um, I can't remember when I bought it. It must have been... I, I bought it not long after it came out uh, with the intention to use it lots and, and, and travel lots and take it to conferences. But that kind of didn't happen this year. No. So it's kind of sitting in the corner of a studio. And I, I dig it out every so often and I, I have a play with it, um, you know, just to get used to the new features. They're always releasing firmware updates, which is one of the things I love about it. Mm. Uh, they unlock the possibility to fine dial in all the things like compressors and all of that on there and EQ, which is really mm. cool. Um, but yeah, I think really... I, I've got so much other gear that yeah. I just kind of swap between each thing. Yeah. I think the, the Rodecaster Pro is sort of like revolutionary in a sense. Like it's nice that a, a manufacturer has spent that much time on R and D in creating a product that's so fitting for this market in particular, like mm -hmm. a digital desk, which, you know, otherwise you can go out and spend like 10 grand on a digital desk for a radio studio as a minimum, you know, right up to about 30 on a proper huge setup. Whereas this is like six hundred dollars, you know, so it's it's kind of it kind of it, I think it, it from that that perspective, it's game changing. I think what would be most interesting to see is if any other companies follow, um, because you know it's kind of like it's the, the price point is so good because it's not it's not unachievable for for sort of home users or prosumers, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, okay, how I've got a question here from Dr. Rucci about how do you remove background noise from pre-recorded guest audio? I think that's quite a good question. Oh, yeah. Um, do you want to go full screen on me for a second? Yes, let's do uh, I can do, I can do a quick example for you. Let's see if I can pull up a, a very, very quick and easy example. Uh, bear with me uh, for a second while I find some uh, files on my computer, and then I'll cut over to my screen share. Actually, I can do that now. Uh, there we go. There we go. So we're on there screen share. And I just need to find a piece of example audio. Uh, which I am looking for right now that I can pull in. Uh, okay, something like that will do. And let's bring in something like this. Adobe Audition has uh, a great view called Spectral Frequency Display. Um, so not only do you get the waveform view over here, but you also get Spectral Frequency Display by clicking this icon up here or Shift and D. It will show you not only the speech, and all the different frequencies, but all of this purple up here, this is hiss. And all of this, like in between the speech, this is noise here. And you can simply, I won't play you the audio, I won't distract you with that on this quick but there is an effect. And in my opinion, Adobe Audition has world-class noise reduction. It's got mm -hmm. a noise reduction effect for pretty much every problem you could hope for. Sound removal, clicks and pops, hiss, um, click removers, phase correction, hum removal, reverb removal. So if I just quickly use the denoise effects, it's so, so uh, cool. 
And then I go into preview mode so I can see before here and we can see after down here. And you can see as I fade this up, it's starting to clean up the audio and make it look a lot better as it goes black. That's basically the process removing uh, a lot of the audio that shouldn't be there. Um, and you can see it working, so you can just apply like that. Um, but yeah, that that is how I would, in a nutshell, go around removing uh, noise from various pieces of noisy audio. Cool. Wow. That was uh, that was impressive. I was impressed in the fact that you managed to bring your screen in, and then you were still in the corner as well. Yeah. So, <laughs> how did you do that? That's what I want to know. So I'm using uh, OBS Studio um, yeah. to do this call with you. Um, so what I do is I have all my cameras. Uh, I have four HDMI inputs going into uh, Blackmagic HDMI capture card uh, on right. the back of the PC. Uh, I have screen share enabled via OBS. Um, every Everything else I can do switching uh, via Stream Deck, as you can see there. I'm just kind of yeah. switching the views there as you can see in the split screen there um and then on obs studio it has a feature uh it's a tool called virtual cam and i start that and obviously we're doing this now via um something called stream yard that's what you're yeah. using stream so i simply send the obs virtual camera to you via stream yard so it comes and like a virtual device control over what yeah. i send to you i can send anything to you uh, via obs studio so anything i do on a normal live stream i can send to you uh, as my output to you in this, uh... this is a command center mike i love it it's great this is incredible i don't think i've ever seen anyone with a with a, a you know a setup of this this kind of magnitude this is incredible um, very, what i will say on that as well yeah. Like I highly recommend it. This year has been really unusual for so many people. Many of us have yeah. had to work from home, do stuff from home, do conference calls from home. Um, a lot of people who are used to maybe you know traveling and speaking and giving talks have suddenly had to you know learn how a webcam works and learn how you know Zoom works to do an online call. Um, with OBS, if you throw uh, like a couple of cameras into OBS, you can suddenly like you know you can become a master because you can, and then this and then this. And then this, and it looks really, really cool. And that's just simple switching in OBS. Mm. But also, you can add graphics and slides. So as I've done, I've, I've done quite a few virtual talks this year instead of mm. actually going to the conference itself. And I'll load my slides into OBS so I can literally do everything because every piece of software is different. You know, I've dialed into different conferences and they all have different ways of screen sharing and different ways to do And some of them work better than others. And I'm just like, if you have control of that your side, using OBS Studio, you don't have to worry what the other person is using to do the online conference because you just send out one feed to them uh, and you don't, yeah, you don't worry. That's simple as that. That's, I recommend it. <laughs> Question from Todd Miller. What is your desk manufacturer? I guess that's referring to your actual, you know, physical desk. Yeah. This is a um, this is a desk by Zaor Z A O R, and if you go to my YouTube channel and you type in, uh, I think just the word desk will bring it up. I did a ten minute video showing you how I obtained this desk and how I put it together. It's quite okay. a piece to put together, um, but yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant desk, and I, I made a full video showing how I put it all together. It's really cool. You know, I think if you've got if you've got the space for it, and certainly if you're looking to build like a professional radio studio or kind of live streaming setup, and it's something that you're going to be using, you know, day in, day out, or certainly on a weekly basis, definitely worth the investment. Um, one of the other things that seem to be really popular at the moment is like um, height adjustable, so you can stand or sit. And I know that some, yeah. um, you know, desk manufacturers, you know, you can easily, and again, there's, there's, there's it's interesting because, you know, IKEA actually sell these desks where you can press a button and it goes up and down. And this is whole whole idea around, like, you know, you don't have to necessarily, like, buy a desk and just use it as it is. You can easily, like, kind of um retrofit like a a rack space at the back of the desk and have your computer on that so you know you don't need to go out and necessarily spend a fortune on this stuff it's just being clever or savvy about how you actually do it but it does make you more productive i think certainly if you're going to be you know broadcasting or um live streaming on a regular basis um yeah, okay very easy. we've got the let's have a look so um Got lots more questions coming in. Uh, uh, okay, here's here's a good question actually about um, if you have a guest on the other end of the line, especially obviously at the moment, a lot of people are using Zoom to record. What's the best way to get the best audio quality from the guest on the other end? 
Best way to get the best quality from the guest on the other end is uh, do something known as a double ender. So you record yeah. it your side and get your guest to record it their side, but they're not always technically capable, your guests. <laughs> so you can't say, fire up the audition, set up your audio interfaces, this microphone, and hit record, and then save the WAV file and send it to me. Um, yeah. So in those instances, a couple of great solutions exist uh, in today's age that I've played about with. Zencaster, that's Zencaster with an R, no E, Zencaster, and uh, Squadcast uh, both allow you to do high quality audio recordings uh, in the cloud. And then it kind of uh, takes both recordings and, and sends them to you. So actually, it works just inside Chrome or Firefox. It'll record your guest natively and send you the audio. So that's probably the easiest way right now to do it, I'd say. Cool. Okay. Um, I think that's great advice. Another one's Riverside FM, which we've been playing around with recently, which it, it does exactly the same thing. You know, I, I think that's really important. A lot of people, it's interesting because I've been interviewed on so many podcasts recently, and it seems to be that the standard thing that most people use is Zoom, which is uh, like, for, from my perspective, is like a little bit of an audio nerd. It's frustrating because it's like, I sometimes said, do you want me to record the audio on my end? And they're like, no, it's fine. And then you listen back to it. And you're like, yeah. yeah. So Zoom is definitely not the best solution out there to record podcasts. You know, go and check out Zencaster, go and check out uh, Squadcast Riverside. They they just they make it easy for the guest because I think you make the key point there. It's like not everyone knows how to record the audio on the end, and why should they also? Like you know, if you're interviewing yeah. someone who's not necessarily got that expertise, it's it's a lot for them to learn. Um, yeah, can nice I little it? people don't have the best microphone their end. So if yeah. you're not doing a show that's related about radio or audio you're talking to a specialist that just has a computer and internal mic that's yeah. where you have to kind of like you know if you can like send them out a mic or something and make make their sound improve you know? but it, you know again that's just such a good advice just for anyone watching who's maybe not necessarily interested in going full out starting a radio station or starting a podcast you know we're all at home at the moment we're all working from home so investing in a decent mic even if you're just doing regular meetings can just make so much difference um, and, and like you said earlier, USB microphone is a minimum, really. It just will, will make you sound, sound 10 times better. Um, okay, we're nearly out of time. So just to, just to quickly finish up, one last question. Best headphones? I think we're wearing the same headphones here. But uh, what what could cut a couple of good options um, for, for headphones? There's only I one good option. These. Yeah. <laughs> the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro. I just absolutely love them yep. uh i got into bayer dynamic uh, many decades ago when i first worked in radio i started off with the dt 100s that make you look a bit like an elephant their chunky design yeah. then i went to the dt 250 and then eventually i got into these 770 pros which like all the professionals all the singers i think uh robbie williams in one of his latest music videos he was wearing dt 770 pros as well mm -hmm. uh, they're just brilliant it's like just get these and you don't need anything else yeah. <laughs> it's simple as that <laughs> yeah it's it's one of those things the, the thing i like about them is you can just wear them for hours and you don't even notice you know it's like you don't fatigue it's not it's not they're not noise cancelling because i i've tried noise cancelling headphones and i just find it strange it just kind of gives you this weird effect and like you, you still kind of you can still have some awareness of what's going on outside yeah. You know, it's not like you're completely cut off from the world, but they are brilliant. And you can wear them for like this all day without an issue. I really like noise cancelling headphones for listening to podcasts, mm. particularly if I'm commuting or if I'm on a plane, um, yeah. you know, or even just out and about. Noise cancelling headphones, brilliant, but I would not use them, like you say, for production or for mm. live. Uh, or creation simply because they kind of make you a little bit dizzy particularly if you're just sitting in one position um so that's where you need something like like these also what i like about the dt770 pros is you can change the cups so once you've bought the headphones you can actually spend i think it's about 20 dollars and get some new like um uh foam bits that go on the end and replace them from time to time it's worth doing definitely yeah especially if you're wearing them all day every day uh cool i think that's it i think we're out of time um but i firstly mike thank you very much for for coming on today it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you and um i think we've just talked so much about so much stuff it's gonna, be, gonna definitely be one to watch back if anyone's just joined and uh wants to kind of catch up there's been lots of uh, products name dropped and, and lots of advice so uh feel free to kind of watch again on demand um just to finish up then mike how can people find out more about you and um how can people connect with you yeah, it's been so cool being on, James. Thanks for having me on. Uh, and the best place to go to connect is youtube.com slash music radio creative. That's youtube.com forward slash 
music radio creative, all one word. It'll take you to my channel. You can search for any video about any topic related to audio. Uh, and there are ways you can get in touch with me via there. We do a weekly live stream and stuff. So it's great fun. Awesome. Thanks very much, Mike. Thanks.